Hey everyone, Kevin here. What I'd like to do in this video is show you how you can buy hash power from NiceHash. Now I'm sure you guys are all aware of NiceHash. It is probably the most popular marketplace out there for buying and selling hash power. If you're a miner, you've probably used their popular miner there, this little app here. Very easy to use. And so, you know, it's not that bad a way to make money. You get paid in Bitcoin uh, for renting out your rigs. Now, an alternative to NiceHash is mining rig rentals. Now I've reviewed mining rig rentals before. I did a, god that was 48 minutes. Uh, it was a long tutorial. This one is going to be long as well but I want to show you everything um, about NiceHash and how it all works. Now what I will just say, just touch upon mining rig rentals. I tried mining rig rentals first. I think it's a fantastic service. I love the way it works but there are some advantage, advantages to NiceHash as well. There's some things that mining rig rentals does well. There's some things that NiceHash does well. Across the board, I haven't tested every algorithm, but looking at pricing, NiceHash does seem to be a little bit cheaper. A little bit cheaper. But as you will see, if you understand many rig rentals, where you basically just hire a rig and you pay a fixed price, NiceHash works very, very differently. And I'm going to show you that because a lot of people might compare these services, but I think they're very, very different. You know, they're, they're set up in a very different way and you will see that. So I have uh, been mining for a few days um, and I've, I've not been doing a huge amount of orders, I've just been messing around really, I haven't sent a, you know, sent a huge amount of hash power out there. Um, if you look at my orders you can see when did I start, um, it was a few days ago, um, I, I started a few days ago my first test and yeah it works really well, I've got one active just now and if I look in the marketplace down here you can see this this is this is my order this is my order just now now you need to i need to kind of explain how this whole system works before i show you this graph but you'll see that it's going up and down up and down up and down now the reason is is because i have chosen a standard order and that means that i have to react to the pricing and in, in the marketplace um i'll move me up a little bit here um, yeah, so the standard order is you're effectively bidding against each other. Everyone's bidding for the miners. And I, it, it took me a while to get an understanding of how the whole system worked. But, um, you know, I'll, I'm happy to admit that when I first went to NiceHash to buying it, I was like, what the hell was going on here? It really didn't seem intuitive. It didn't seem user-friendly. But I kind of messed around with it. I played around with it. And hopefully I can simplify it for you guys and give you my idiot view of it. Um, so if you go to the very top of the page here, you'll see two different types of order, standard and fixed. Now this, in my opinion, is a little bit misleading. Some of the things here I think is a little bit misleading to people placing their very first order. Now this page explains that if you go to here, need help, it takes you to this page and it says how to create a new order. And you'll see standard order and you see fixed order. So I'll, so I'll link to this page so you can see it, but a standard order is effectively you can see it down here s for standard f for fixed and um, a standard order is you're bidding against everyone so you're bidding against everyone else and that means that your speed can go up and down it means that you might have to adjust your pricing because everyone's you know fighting against each other for the same hash power some people are willing to wait some people aren't and this is how you get all these ups and downs now a fixed order doesn't mean the price is fixed this is the thing that confused me a fixed order means the speed is fixed. What that means is if you place a fixed order, you are guaranteed to get the speed that you want to buy. Whether it be, you know, you want 10,000 souls, 100,000, 1 mega soul, whatever you want, you can guarantee to get exactly what you want. But what isn't guaranteed is the price. It's not guaranteed. And you can see here the price is grayed out because the price will go up and down with a fixed order. The speed will, you can control the speed that you want and you can control how much you spend. That's what amount is. But you cannot control what you pay. And that is why the fixed orders are at the very top of the page. The, the very top of the page because people who place a fixed order will always pay the most. Because, well, not always, but by and large, if you're placing a fixed order and you're, guaranteed, you're wanting a guaranteed speed, chances are you're going to have to pay through the nose for it because people are competing for the best prices. So you have to be at the top. That's my idiot way of understanding it. Now, it might seem a little bit silly, um, this whole setup, and you might be wondering, why would anyone actually want to do that? Why would anyone want to pay more money? But 
there are certain situations where you need to guarantee a speed. For example, if you know that, say a coin, a, a pool, a successful pool went down and say it's went back online and you know that it's going to you know, get popular and more people are going to be hashing there soon, then you could go, right, I've only got five hours to mine here. I need to try and mine as much as I can before they do a tweet and tell everyone else the pool is back open live. You could jump on there. You could get a fixed price for a set number of hours and you know I'll get, you're guaranteed that uh, speed for a few hours. There's lots of other situations like that, but basically if you want to guarantee the speed over a set period of time, you want to place a fixed order. Now, I admittedly, when I came here, you know, when I first looked at NiceHash, I really wasn't sure how it all worked. I looked at one video about it on YouTube and he told me, he explained some things well, but there's a the few other things he explained very badly in my opinion. I'm not going to call them out, but I have saw a few people saying this as well, where he said, yeah, you want to be in this grey area at the top. I'm like, not really. The way that I've been doing it, and it really does depend on how you want to, you know, buy your hash power, but basically, if you're at the top here, you're paying the most, right? You're paying the most, but you're guaranteed to get the most hash power. So if you're down here, you'll be paying the least. So ideally, if you can, now if you, like for example, if you if you don't care about whether your hash power is mine today or tomorrow or two days from now, you really want to be bidding your bid order like down here, right? But you need you can see this outbid this order. Now you can see there's a lot of miners. This is the number of miners that are actually helping this person fulfill his order. Now if, if someone up here goes, well, I need, you know, put a, a full mega soul. Then all of a sudden, all the miners from the lower price bids will go to the higher price bid. And you'll see this happen where basically the, the hash power goes to zero. So during this period when my hash power was zero, effectively, some someone up here needed more hash power. And because they had a higher price, it went to them. But when their, when their order completed, it went back down to the lower orders, i.e. mine. And then you can see the hash power resumed. And this is how the bidding works. It's a, it's a back and forward. Now, it really is up to you depending on how you want to do it because you have to look at a lot of things when you place this order. And I'm going to do an order for you guys to show you how it all works. But just bear in mind, when you're placing an order, you have to look at the pool that you're mining to. You have to look at the hash rate of the pool, the hash rate of the network. You, you ideally have to look at the price of the coin if it's on you know an exchange. Um, and you want to look at how long you want to mine over you need to make this decision beforehand do you want to mine your you know if you if you're going to spend 30 40 dollars or something excuse me if you're going to spend 30 40 dollars on an order do you want to mine it over a couple of hours and just send a huge amount of hash power over an hour or do you want to you know spread it out over days or even longer than that you have to make that decision um now, I would say, I'm going to show you how it all works, but I do think the best way to get to use it is, is really just to place an order yourself and see how it all works. Um, because I know some of the things here, it's maybe not as intuitive to understand as you would like. It's not it's certainly not as simple to understand as mining rig where you, you basically, in, in mining rig rentals, you essentially just go and you say, I want to hire this person's rig for, you know, three hours or 24 hours or whatever. If you don't get the hash power you promised, they'll give you a refund, and that's how it works. It's very simple. You know the price beforehand. You know the speed that you're going to get. Um, but nice hash works very, very differently. So what what I'll just say with this active order here, and you can see I've got a couple of orders there, and I've got one active. But see with this uh, active order, now I can change uh, the price, right? But see as far as decreasing price, I can only go down one. So if, for example. I want to go down, I'm like, right, I don't want to make it that high. I want to go down to three, four hundred. It won't let me because you can only go down one at a time, basically to three, four, nine, eight. Now, this is one of my main criticisms of nice hash and mining rig rentals. If you want to change your mining setup, you can change the pool. You can change anything, really. You can change exactly where it's been mined to. Um, but you can't do that here. As you can see, the only thing you can change is the price. And the limit now the price as i said so basically okay the way the best way to understand it is if i want to decrease the price i can go down by one so like three four nine eight now i can go down by zero point was it three zeros and a one every 10 minutes now that's my limit so if i pr price it too highly at the start I, I it's always going to be too high you know because i can't come down quick enough 
But if um, I want to change the limit, that's different. Now, there is no limit to how much you increase. So say your initial order is priced too high and you, and you, pray and you go, damn, because this is, this is what I did with my first order. I, I wanted to get mining, so I pre priced it higher up here. But then I could only decrease it 0 0.001 at a time and it takes an age to go down and it's simply not practical. What you can do instead um, is just cancel the order. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But from a, a, a price change, from an editing point of view, when you've placed an order, you can decrease it by 0 0.001 or three zeros and a one uh, every 10 minutes, but you can increase at any point. So whenever you want, you can change your order from down here and go right to the top if you want. But once you're at the top, you can only go down in very small increments. Now, it's a little bit frustrating in certain situations, but I understand why it's there. It's to stop people abusing the system, and it's to stop people just jumping up and down to take advantage of the hash power. It seems a little bit backwards, but it's kind of organized chaos. It does make sense. Now, the one one thing you can change is your hash power. Now, you can see here I've got 0 0.02. Now, mega souls, this is the thing. It's all priced in mega souls, which gets a little bit confusing, but... Essentially, for the effort, I'm in Equihash here. Um, and of course, with NiceHash, you can choose any one of these algorithms. But I'm in Equihash here, and for Mega Souls, um, 0 0.02 is essentially 20,000 souls. So, to put it into perspective, I've got 30 GPUs and I get 12,000 souls. This order here is for 20,000. So, not as much as double my rigs, but not far off it. Um, and I can change that anytime. So if I want, I can, for example, I'm gonna I could put this up to say fifty thousand souls. So I'm gonna change that to fifty thousand souls. And what's gonna happen now over time is that that hash rate will increase. Now here's the thing. If if I want to get 0 0.05 and I haven't priced it high enough, then I won't get 50, I won't get 0 0.05, I won't get fifty thousand souls. So the reason I'm saying this is this order is priced too high. It's priced at 0.3498. But say I'd priced it away down here, and you can see there's people down here, and they're getting hash power as well for a lower price. Now, if I had if I had um, priced it a little bit lower, I might say I want 50,000 souls. But if it's priced too low, you might not get the hash rate you want. So I could say, hey, I want, I want 100,000 souls. But if I've priced it too low, people are outbidding me, I might only get 10,000 souls. And this, you know, this is how the system works. It's a marketplace, it's an auction. So I can say I want 100,000 souls, but they'll say, well, you've not bid high enough and I'm away down the bottom. I might only get 5,000 souls or 10,000 souls. I need to increase the price so that I can guarantee the price, uh, guarantee the, the speed. Now, and this is how it works. The more money, the higher the price that you set, the more money you throw at it, the more you can guarantee that you'll get the price that you want over the period that you want. Now, I don't know if I'm explaining this quite well. It does seem a little bit confusing. Um, but what I'm going to do, um, I'll place an order now and I'll show you exactly how it works as far as setting up a pool. And you guys can get an idea of how that works. Um, I'll just jump over to here. I'll bring this page up here. So I'm going to use Equipool as an example. Uh, this is an Equihash mining pool. Um, I'll go to Savecoin. And you'll see information here about you know how you set it up. Um, now you can see here, username is your address. Um, password, you just put X unless you want to set a password. Um, what you can do, a lot of pools allow you to set your email address and you can set your minimum payout and all this kind of thing. You've got Europe, North America, and Asia. Now, you did notice there that the two main um, places are USA and Europe. So make sure you choose the right stratum here. You choose Europe or you choose North America. Now the other thing you have to choose for the correct difficulty level is the port. Pools have a nice hash port, so make sure you choose the right port. If you don't, then you're, you know, you you won't it won't work. Essentially, it won't work. That's what I'm trying to say. It won't work. Um, right. So um, you can see I've got pools set up already, but I'm going to set up a new pool. Um, I'm going to set up a new pool. Um, so what I want to do first, in fact, what was what I want to do, right? So what I'm going to try, I want to I want to illustrate what I was talking about with the price and the speed, because as I said. It's better for me to place an order low and then jump up higher to where I want it to be. So say about here, right? This, this might not be high. In fact, I'm going to go lower. I'll go here and I'll show you what happens if you don't place an order high enough because you can see it's all zeros here. But I want to show you how it works. So add a new pool. And, and what this has done is this has set the price. 0.3151. 
So that's the price, and you can see the price in Bitcoin mega sales per day. Now, what I will say is that I don't really look at the actual price and work backwards that way. I'll, I, I kind of do it a little bit differently. Um, I'll talk about that in a second, right? So this is the price in the market, the, the Bitcoin per mega sale per day. But if you're only placing an order over hours, it can be kind of strange to work backwards. You've got limit here, but limit is hash rate. Limit is hash rate. And then you've got amount. Amount is how much you want to spend. How much you want to spend, right? So that's that's the three prices. This is the actual price in the market. This is limit, which is the speed of your, or your power, your hash rate. And then you've got amount, which is how much you want to spend. Now, this is the minimum purchase, 0 0.05 Bitcoin. Um, so where are we in the price? Um, so $32.95 today is the price. So that's the lowest order you can place in nice hash right now at today's prices. So that's the order I'm going to put in. You can see I've got 0 0.03, so I could put in six orders like this. Um, and then I've got the speed. And again, limit is mega souls. Now I've got, that's 10,000 souls, but what I want to go for is 100,000 souls. Um, I'll agree with the terms and conditions. Now I'll jump back up above here and I'll set up the pool. But one thing I just want to talk about is the fees. I, I kind of, I didn't touch upon that earlier. Now, as far as what you pay as a fee, here's what you pay. When you put in a new order, you you get charged that 0 0.000001. And you can see it was there before, it's 66 cents. So you pay 66 cents plus you pay 3% on um, your order. So here, what was it before? Um, was it that? Right, so it's 32.95 times 0 0.03 add 0.66. So in dollars, my order is going to cost me $1.64. So $1.65. $1.65 if you round up. So $1.65 is how much this order is going to cost me, right? So remember I was saying about cancelling an order? Well, when you cancel an order, it doesn't cost you any money. It doesn't cost you anything. So if, if you've placed in a big order and you went, oh my God, I've priced it too high. This is going to cost me a fortune. You have to do the maths, but it could be in your interest to cancel the order. It doesn't cost you anything to cancel. And when you've canceled, the Bitcoin just goes back into your nice hash wallet. If you want, send it to an exchange, send it to your wallet, do what you want with it. You can cash out if you want. But if you do want to simply correct your order, then you need to place another order, which means you then get charged again. Now, this price, $1.65, is for the lowest order. It's for someone who's only paying 0 0.0005. If you had placed an order and you were spending thousands of dollars, 3% is obviously a lot more. So bear that in mind, 3% and your 66, 66 cents or 0 0.0001, that will obviously change over time with Bitcoin. Um, that that um, fee is non-refundable. So as soon as you place an order, that money's gone. When you decide whether it's worthwhile cancelling an order, you have to look at the fact that cancelling is free, but you'll need to be charged, you will be charged again to place another order. Now, it might be a little bit of a pain. Some people might not agree with that. But bearing in mind that when you buy a mining rig, uh, you can't really cancel it. You can, If you cancel it, you need to say why and all that. Um, so it's good that you can cancel it. But the way that I would say that the main reason for cancelling would be if you were mining to the wrong pool, if you'd set the price too high, or if you simply saw the price was lower and you thought, cancel it, I'm going to use the money, I'm going to cash out. So I'll jump back and what I've got the details here. And I'm going to copy them over from my notepad. So I've got pool name. I'm going to put Safecoin Equipool EU test. And again, I went for the information for um, the EU stratum here and the nice hash port. So I'm going to put in the stratum name, which is mine euro um, safe Equipool. I've got the port, which is here. The username, um, the username is my wallet address. But what I'm going to do at the end is put dot or period and then put NH. Now this will allow me to see, this will allow me to see um, the worker. So essentially when you put a, a full stop at the end and then put a word or a name or any kind of term at the end, this will be your worker name. So I'm putting NH for nice hash. You could simply write nice hash if you wanted to. In fact, let's do that. So I'm going to put nice hash, so dot nice hash because nice hash is um, the worker name. Just so that I, when I look at the pool, when I go over to Equipool, 
I can see the graph. And if I've got my other rigs mining to it, I'll see like rig one main PC. I'll then see, I'll see nice hash and I can go, right, that's a nice hash graph. That's how much I've made. That's the speed and all that. So um, I'm just checking it all there. I've got 0 0.3151, uh, the limit and all that. Now what you've got here, there is a pull uh, verify option here. Um, and I should be able to verify it here. And I do recommend that. Now, you guys can't see that right now. So I'm going to jump over to my monitor. Right, okay. So you guys should see that now. Um, I'm going to verify the pool. Come up as a pop-up. I didn't realize that. So uh, test pool is compatible. So that's good. So the test pool is compatible. So go back. Um, and what I'm going to do is place the order now. And for that, I need to jump over here um, because obviously I've got Google Authenticator. And I'm going to put in a 2FA code. So right now I've got 9, 970481. I'm going to place the order. There you go, order placed. Right. Now, remember, I have purposely priced this too low because if I place it too high, I need to go down in really, really, really small increments and I can only do it every 10 minutes. If I place it too low, I can then look at the lowest, um, where the minus are, the lowest price. Now, again, don't be fooled by, um, you can be fooled by the, the way the marketplace is going right now because um, see like here, right? This is a good example of this, right? So you can see like my, my miners have kind of jumped right up to here, right? Um, and you can see I'm at point zero, so I'm at 50,000 souls. Now, it's jumped right up. Now, I could, I'm one of the lowest ones there. Oh, in fact, that's my other order. What am I doing? There it's there. There it's there. Right. Okay. Sorry about that. Right. So this is, this is exactly what I was trying to show you. So this is my original order. You can see that the, the speed is actually going down now. The speed of my hash power is going down. And the reason being, there's people up here who want 10 megasoles. Now, these people could be performing an attack right now for all I know. That could be an attack, what they're buying. You know, that's a huge amount of hash power going through 10 megasoles. Now, because of them taking all these miners up, they're, they're using, that's like, what's that, about 12,000 miners or so. All this hash power going to these few standard orders. Mines has now dropped in hash power simply because there's not enough miners to mine for my order. And this order down here, well, there's no one doing that. You know, there's no one there mining on my new order. This is my new order. But this illustrates how this works because... It's, now, it would be tempting, and I was tempted by this at first as well, it's tempting to then go, right, I'm going to put my price up, I want to ensure that I'm mining, and then you want to put your price up, you put your price up, and then you want to jump from here up to, like, say here, so maybe increase the price up to, like, 0.36, right? But when these, when these massive orders are complete, then you'll find that there'll be people mining down at this low price. So you need to understand how this all works. If you if you put in an order and you're not getting your hash rate, you have to decide whether it's important for you to get the speed right now at any price or whether you can wait. Now, sometimes big orders like that are going to come in. Big orders where someone's like 10 megasoles, 10 megasoles, 10 megasoles. They will take up all the hash rate and the only way to get hash power yourself is to put a price above them. But again, this, is, this comes back to what we said before. If you do jump up the price above them, once the order has completed, then all of a sudden you're paying a huge amount of money for hash power when you could be paying a low amount of money, uh, a low value for uh, hash power. And it, it, this is how the marketplace works. So the way that I'm tackling this and the way I'm trying to tackle this, if you really, really need the hash power, if you really need it over a short period of time, then bump the price up. But if you're happy for it to go over a period of, say, 24 hours, wait it out. There will be periods like this where someone, like see during these periods, someone has spiked the price up and because of that, um, because they've spiked the price up, you can't do anything. You know, you can't do anything because, you know, they've got all the hash power. But when their order is complete, the price jumps back down. And what this means is over a period of time, then I will get, you know, a, a more value for, for my purchase. I will get, I'll get more hash power for my purchase really um, at a lower price. Now, I'm going to jump back down here. And I'm just going to put it to, let's see, let me see. I've still got a little bit. See, this hash power has gone down to zero, right? Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the order. 
Uh, let me see, what price will I pick? So, say, say I'm going to go up to about... Say I'm going to go up to 0 0.035, right? I can I can change this again. I just want to get some hash power there. Um, and I'm going to put it down... Yeah, I'll leave it at that just now. So I'm going to change. Now, again, I, can't, I can only go down in price now in small increments. I can't go back down to that level now effectively. Um, so now I've got my two orders together. And I might have to increase the price again because you can see there's miners here. So what I'm going to do is increase price. And this might help me get more hash power now. Once once that comes up, you can actually, as I like said, you can edit the order. You can cancel the order as well. You can refill the order if you just want to place the same order again. Annoyingly, what's, what annoys me is you can't actually change the pool. But what I can do is if I click on details, you can bring up the details page of this and it'll show you all the information at the top. You can see right away I spent, you know, you can see remaining because the fee, this fee that we calculated there of $1.65, um, that's come off already. So that's what's remaining of my order. So if I had to cancel the order, that's what I would get back. Now, right now, you can see it's now shooting up. Um, so I'd placed, I'd placed the order about here. It was too low, but now the order is shoot, shooting up. I'm getting hash power. And you you will, if I refresh the page, you should be able to see the hash power there. Um, see, it's, like, it's just a line there just now, but it is showing. So there's a line there just now. So my hash power has shot up. So what I want to do now, um, I'll just I'll jump over and I'll put in this address and my pool. And this is what you need to do. You need to check that everything's okay. This is going to be the, the, the statistics page for my order, right? And there it's here. You can see it's just started. Um, and if I take away my webcam for a second. So it's just started uh, pending one safe coin already. I've been paid here before. I actually used this in the, in the mining rig rentals, this address. As an example and you can see the hash rate will be going up right now it's it's going up to what's saying 25 25,000 souls but if I refresh it, it should be even more than that and you know this is coming from here you can see it's spiking up now over time the graph is going to change over time so now it's up to 42,000 so I'm now getting 42,000 souls um, and this page will show me the speed, the average speed, the pending shares, amateur shares, and all that, as you would expect from a mining pool. Now, if I scroll down here, this this actually shows me a little bit more information here. It shows me that the pool hash rate is 1.1. They've got way off too much hash power. Uh, and the network hash rate is 1.33. Now, in that, I think the hash rate is small, right? And this again, this is what I'm saying about um, you need to review the situation. I think that that hash power is quite small right now. It's uh, quite low, sorry. Um, the hash power for Safecoin is, you know, last night, for example, was up at 2. It's been at 1.8. So what I can do is try and take advantage of that. So this is where what I want to do now is go, right, I'm going to send a little bit more hash power. I'm going to send maybe, um, say, 2. I'll send 200,000 souls. It's a huge amount of hash power. Um, now, you can see when I change that, the remaining, the re estimated time. So this is the estimated time for the order to go through. So now that I've changed the, the order, I've changed it from 100,000 souls, which is 0.1 megasouls, to 0.2, which is 0.2 megasouls, which is 200,000 souls. I've changed it to that. Um, now, because of that, it will take less time to fill the order. That makes sense. So just refresh this page and I'll just show you what's there. So you can see that I've spent more money. There's less remaining. You can see there's 2% completed. And you can see rejected at pool and all these different stats as well. So a lot of information here, everything that you need to, to help you see what's going on. Now, I'm 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 not doing this 100% the way I would do this if um, I wasn't recording a video. I, want to mess, I wouldn't be messing about with it as much. I'd probably set it a little bit lower. I'd probably want it over a longer period of time, you know, set it, you know, over days perhaps or even weeks even. Um, it, it does depend on the situation though, it depends on the pool hash rate, it depends on the network hash rate, it depends on the price, it depends on lots of other things, if you know a coin is going to spike up in price, if you think the block reward is going to reduce, if there's all, there's all these other things you have to consider, but once you've considered them, once you think, once you know, right, I want to mine to a pool, this is where you step in with nice hash. Now, this pool, and again, I can't stress this enough, this pool right now is 
you know, is going at the hash rate I want at 200,000 souls or thereabouts. But see, these are flashing up green and red. If someone comes in and they put in a few of these 10 mega soul orders, then I might lose the hash power because all the, the more higher priced orders are being filled. So again, if you're, if you're willing to wait, if you're willing to wait, you can put in some of these low orders. Now, some of these low orders might never get filled because they've been priced too low. They've been priced too low. But some of these might spike every now and then. And for some people, that's enough because they've done the maths. They know that, you know, at this this rate, uh, you know, this rate of 0.3346 Bitcoin per mega soul per day, at that rate, at the price of the coin that they're mining, they know that if they spend any more, then it eats into their profits and they don't make enough money. So it's easy to say, oh, these people have priced it too low. You don't know what they're mining. You don't know what coin they're mining. You don't know the situation that, you know, they've set up. So everyone is mining a different coin here. Everyone's mining for different reasons. But you can see here, I'm going to put this down a little bit and see if I still get the hash rate. So ready or low. I'm just messing around with it again. Now, with this, I could put the price up. I can change the order. But again, if I had to put this down, I can only go down to 0.3510. I can't jump down to this level. I really, I can't. It's just not possible. It can be frustrating at times, this system, but if I really didn't like the fact that my order was too high, if I changed the price and I put this up at like 0.4 or something, then I, the, the easiest thing for me to do would be to cancel the order. Like, for example, look at the price what this guy is paying. This guy is paying a huge amount of money for his hash rate. And to me, I think it's a little bit silly because I'm still getting hash power. So he's paying a lot of money for his hash power there. Now, see here that the hash power has dropped? That is probably related to the fact that I just dropped my price. I dropped my price a little bit, which means that you know some it might go to some of these higher priced orders. And that's what it's all about, guys. It, it, the pricing is changing all the time. It's a constant battle. You have to continue to review things. You can change the price up if you don't think it's high enough. I, as I said, I have been leaning towards pricing my orders low and then moving up. I think, you know, considering the fact that you can only go down in smaller increments, I think that is the best approach, guys. There's bound to be some of you guys watching this that is more experienced with nice hash, but over the last few days, that's how I've interpreted the best way to use this system. You know, if you price it too high and you're really, you know, if you'd place this order way too high, cancel the order. Cancel the order and then go back and place another order and just take the, you know, take the 3% hit and order again because you'll lose a lot more than 3% by paying this kind of hash rate when you can get it a lot lower. You should really be trying to aim for down here. Not professing to be an expert on this, um, but you can see here, you know, just by dro dropping the price and because of things changing, I went from like 120 mega souls there, 120 or 130,000 souls, it says, down to 77 souls. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. But if, for example, as I said, I think the network hash rate is low, if I definitely want this hash rate to go up, I definitely want 200, I have no choice. I have to put this price up. I have to put this price up. So I'd have to put the price up to make around this mark where this guy is. But when you put the price up, well, your order is going to fill in quicker. Your order might get completed in three hours rather than three and a half hours. So you get less, you know, you're hashing for a, a, a smaller period of time. So I've, I know I've kind of went over a lot of things many times today in this video, um, but the basis, the basic, um, the basic way to look at all this is that it's, it's an auction auction system. Everyone's trying to outbid everyone, but if you bid too high because you can only bid, you know, you can only go down in small increments, you could end up paying more than you wanted to, and this is where you need to cancel the order. It doesn't cost anything to cancel. It does cost something to to buy again. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Um, if you'd like to learn more about mining rig rentals, please check out that video and check out that service. It is a very good alternative, a, a great alternative, in, uh, in fact. Um, I will say, though, I have been quite happy with NiceHash. I'm still experimenting with it. Um, I've just been playing around with it, but now I understand how mining rig rentals works. Now I understand how this auction system works, where it flashes up different orders all the time and everything refreshes. Um, like, look at that. Now that order's down to zero. This order's down to zero. So I'm going to have to change those orders. But now that I understand, now that I understand how nice hash works, and hopefully you guys can understand it as well. This isn't something I'm going to use all the time. But now that I understand how it works, I've got it in my toolbox. It's in my weaponry. If there is a situation where I know 
hey, I, I need hash power to this pool. I've got a small period of time to do it. Or if I do my calculations, I'm like, if I send, you know, if I see, for example, that the price of a certain coin is at a certain price, and if I can get hash power at this price, then I can make money. You can actually make money doing that. You know, you can make a lot of money and it's arbitrage. You're looking at the price of the coin. You're looking at the price that you're paying for the hash power and what you'll get in return. And you try to do your calculations. And it's all about calculations, guys. You need to do your sums. You need to work out whether it's it's um, worthwhile. And then your sums will have to change because of the order system. So thanks for watching, guys. I do appreciate it's been quite a long-ish video. And I do appreciate I went over a lot of these things over and over again as far as cancelling, as far as changing your order, as far as going up and down and all that. But I hope you've got a better understanding of how NiceHash works. Again, I'm not an expert on this. I really don't consider myself an expert after a few days. But I would say it doesn't take long to figure out how it works. If you can spare $30, $40, guys, put in a, a little basic order and get a feel for what you can do with NiceHash. Um, get a feel for the standard orders. Have a look at fixed orders um, as well. Um, and again, you look at, look at that page to get a better understanding of it. I'll link to this below and it explains it all in more detail. Get a better understanding of it all. The prices change again. Uh, put $50 in or something. Get a better understanding of it all. Set up your pools. Try it out. And you don't have to use it. But there will come a point, if you're mining all the time, if you're always looking at speculative coins, there will come a point where a coin is priced too low, where a pool doesn't have enough hash rate. We, this is where you can take advantage of nice hash. Or simply, if, if you can't mine a specific algorithm, if you don't have the equipment to mine an algorithm, jump onto nice hash. Um, and you can do that there. And a lot of people do that. A lot of people set up NiceHash and then they mine to NiceHash simply to accumulate Bitcoin in their account so that they can mine to another algorithm. A lot of people using it in different ways, guys. So thanks for watching. I hope, you, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've at least uh, learned a little bit more about NiceHash. Please do leave a, a comment below if you like to, um, if you get any questions about it, if you just want to know more about how it all works, you're just unsure about it, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. And until next time, guys, take care.